Some balls winning awards, SEC Weekly Awards, Caleb. One of them I think was very deserved, Charles Campbell, who's just become automatic as a field goal, kick, field goal kicker. And last year you would have said, who cares? He's just kicking extra points. But this year they need him because they're not finishing inside the red zone. I thought that was very appropriate. Then we get to John Campbell, who was a co-offensive lineman of the week. And you had a bit of an issue with that. Why? Yes, I was not a fan of that. Um, I So the first one is he picked up a holding penalty. that He had a holding penalty that did kill a drive on Saturday at Kentucky. Joe Milton was sacked twice. Now, I went back and watched video of one of the sacks, and I was criticizing Milton for holding the ball. But I went back and looked at it, Dave, and somebody put this on Twitter. Joe had two and a half seconds to get rid of the ball. If if you're sacked within three seconds, it's on the offensive line usually, right? And yes. and I saw, so his first, pro- and, and then someone showed the footage. Joe's first progression wasn't there. His second progression wasn't there. His third read was open. But you don't have time to go to your third read if you only have two and a half seconds to get rid of the ball. Now, I will say, maybe you could say Joe Milton should have should have known, because Peyton Manning would have known that his third read was going to be open before he snapped the ball, because he could see the defensive coverage and say, oh, that guy's going to be the one who's open. But can... Is that really fair to expect Joe Milton to, or any college quarterback to typically know that their third read is going to be open before they snap the ball? Didn't, didn't uh, John Campbell leave the game for a moment too, when he was injured? Yeah. He got banged up in the game too. Yeah. Okay. So, so work with me here because you're, you may think I'm crazy at first and I didn't bring this up to you because I wanted your, your fresh take on this. Is this in some, how, some way a nod to Tennessee that you didn't get the best officiating at Alabama at Alabama or Kentucky at Alabama the week before you think so he you think he got SEC offensive lineman of the week because of what happened the week before just wondering if you give a tip of the cap to hey you know you kind of got the raw deal at Alabama um let's give you an award or something am I complete is that you're a conspiracy theory guy, and it doesn't help anybody, and I don't think Josh Heupel cares. But if you're sitting there in the SEC office and you're like, you know, that John Campbell, uh, Tennessee could certainly use an award here, and their tailbacks split it up so it's not one guy, and uh, uh, Joe Milton wasn't the best quarterback, so you can't go that guy. And, and they didn't have a defensive player that did much of anything because they refused to do anything but play zone. Well. Maybe you say, how about that offensive lineman award? This is not the first time that I've seen the offensive lineman award. And not to mention it's co that I've scratched my head that I've wondered if there was something else at play. Elias says it was a solid game, but it wasn't a dominant performance. I think it goes as simple as this. People don't know how to read stats for offensive linemen because they, because as you know, Dave stats, cornerback and offensive line, are the two most impossible position to judge by stats. Am I right? Those two specifically? Yes. Oh, they're, they're, it's impossible. Yeah. So they looked at Saturday and John Campbell didn't allow any sacks and didn't allow any pressures. Well, a big flaw in that stat line is, you know, if you hold, it doesn't count against you on pressures. Um, which, right. it, it, which, which is ridiculous because John Campbell called a holding penalty where he would have allowed a pressure. Obviously, maybe even a sack. Well, here's situation. the other thing too. That here's the other thing too that you have to remember. Tennessee promotes these guys to the conference, so there is not somebody at the SEC conference that is going down the list and saying, "Hey, this guy," and and, and reviewing all of the film of every single offensive lineman. What they ought to do is call Cole Kubelik at WJOX because he does break them down and he does an incredible job. Love Cole. So that that's what they ought to do, and. But they're, that's, they're not going to do that. They're going to take the recommendation of the individual schools, and the individual school is going to say, John Campbell graded out the highest, so he's the guy. But he did. He when was like even, the fourth-graded offensive lineman on the team on Saturday. When what? He was like the fourth-highest-graded great highest offensive lineman on the team Saturday. According to what? According to PFF. Okay, so, which which I would take as, as, as a better indicator – than Tennessee saying it. 
They might, yeah. you know, John Campbell could be going through a tough time we're not aware of, and Tennessee could say, let's give him a boost. I mean, it could be as simple as that. I'm I'm not exaggerating. Maybe a confidence because, booster? Yeah, because the SEC is not going to look at every single offensive lineman every week. Well, um, we know they do this, for instance, you know this better than I do, Dave. We know they do this for Coach of the Year awards. The Coach of the Year is cover for them to say, well, because I didn't think this team would be good. Well, I can't be wrong. I'm obviously right. So obviously this coach just did a great job making them play better than I thought they were. That was why well, Fulmer won it in 98. Looking at every offensive lineman would be like looking through sports treasures, who has over 5 million sports treasures and so much more. Follow on Facebook for the best sports memorabilia. Daily updates. Uh, go to Facebook, follow at sportstreasurestn.com, sportstreasurestn on Facebook. I'm sorry, not com. Uh, not dot com. Go to Facebook, sportstreasurestn. Uh, so highly recommend that. And um, as a whole, John Campbell this year, you would give a what? I mean, I think his great. I think he grades out as a B. I'm a fan of John Campbell. I mean, the effort's there, and the raw talent is there. I think there are certain schematic mistakes he makes every now and then, a, a lack of understanding about leverage sometimes. But I think the beauty, and Dave, you probably know this more about playing offensive line. Well, I'm not saying you played offensive line, but you probably know this more than I do. My guess is with left tackle, even though it's the most important position on the offensive line, it's also the one that requires the least amount of learning, doesn't it? I mean, it's, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And um, Albert Toina was proof of that. Uh, Elias Gray says it was the billion yards rushing, so that was it. And did Tennessee, um, sack wise, they got they allowed two sacks. Um, I, one of I, them, okay, to be well, fair, that, I was trying, I was trying to make an argument for John Campbell. I don't know well, how to be hell fair. He won one of the sacks, the sacks I'm bringing up was actually on Javante Spragans, and Spragans is hurting his NFL draft stock this year because he's a great run blocker, but his pass protection is is, is kind of an issue. Um, and that's something he's got to work on. I was gonna try hard to make a, a an argument for him, but you can't tell me you can't tell me that he was graded higher by Tennessee than cooper mays and i'm not just saying that because he's a part of what we do i mean do you have those pff grades in front of you? yeah he, like well it. he he was graded higher than cooper mays but you have to remember also kentucky was really elite in the middle so cooper mays and javante spragans and ollie lane had a much tougher job on saturday than john campbell or gerald mincy did yeah i, I mean i don't get it I, I don't i don't understand why he was a selection but nevertheless tennessee cider company the original hard cider of the smoky mountains use the promo code hat that's hat to receive some free swag with your cider order available most anywhere in the U.S., go to tnsidercompany.com, tnsidercompany.com. Use the promo code HAT. You get free swag with that fantastic cider. 